The traffic soon comes to a stop as soldiers carry out checks. Security here and across the city is being raised. Government forces are convinced the rebels will use any US strike as cover to launch an offensive. There is a real nervousness in the city with military action hanging over everyday life. It really is on edge. Now, this is as close as we can get to this military checkpoint down there. They've been reinforced all around the city over the last 48 hours. And the soldiers who are manning them are defiant. They say they don't care who they fight, whether it's US Marines or opposition fighters who they call terrorists. They will defend their president with their lives. In this part of Damascus, which is a government stronghold, people worry that the French will also commit. The legacy of France as a colonial power in Syria is unmistakable. At this bakery, customers buying their daily bread are anxious, but there's also defiance. I think that French wants uh, to attack Syria, but uh, she isn't uh, strong enough or courage enough to do it, so, so she had to wait the US uh, decision to do it. And I'm really surprised about England that finally she wakes up and know the truth and uh, don't want to, to make the same mistake that uh, she made it uh, in Iraq. And the French influence extends deep. The Hôpital Saint Louis was established during the occupation. It's run by Christians and Muslims. They work side by side. In this room, we meet Father Amir Kassa, a Catholic priest. He was severely injured when the Christian quarter was struck by rebel rockets. He fears if outside forces join the fight, the sectarian divisions pitching Syrian against Syrian will only worsen. We don't care who's the ruler of this country, he tells me. We're against the formation of an Islamic state. We want a Syrian secular state for all Syrians. Most people in this part of the city support President Assad, but they wonder how long this almost normality can continue.